This video is brought to you by Lightspeed, We're a Zulu, and by WX Weather. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Bertarelli and you're watching AvWeb's coverage of AOPA Expo 2008. The big buzz at this year's show is Garmin's introduction of the new GPS map 696, the latest of its all-purpose GPS navigators. The 696 is Garmin's first attempt at a large screen GPS display for the aviation market, and as you can see from the sample they sent us, the screen is indeed large. The screen is three times uh, larger than the GPS map 496 and 396, and that means that some of the display elements that required separate individual pages on the 496 are now combined in a single larger screen. We'll take a closer look at that during our flight demo, but first let's zoom in and take a look at the hardware. If you're familiar with Garmin's product line, it's best to think of the 696 as a 496 stuffed into a new hardware package with some of the controls borrowed from the GNS 530 and the G1000 glass panel suite. So if you can operate the 496, the 530, or the G1000, you'll have no trouble with the 696. The hardware platform is new for Garmin. It's purpose-built for aviation and not adapted for marine or ground units as Garmin has done in the past. This is a backlighted LCD screen. It's WVGA and measures 7 inches on the diagonal. The overall size is 5.7 by 7.7 .7 inches, and it's 2 inches deep. At 2 pounds, the 696 is no lightweight either. Although it looks like an electronic flight bag, or EFB, it really isn't. The 696 uses a Garmin proprietary processor, which doesn't run third-party programs, as most EFBs do. As you can see, the control set is arrayed along the edge bezel, and it has both soft keys and a joystick. These dedicated keys on the right bezel will be familiar to anyone who's used a 430 or a 530. Inside the box, the 696 has Garmin's WAS-capable 5 hertz receiver and an internal antenna. There's also a detachable battery with up to 8 hours of capacity. The 696 can also run on ship's power. XM Data Link weather is standard these days, and the 696 does that through this remote antenna. So that's what the hardware looks like. Let's take the thing flying. All right, left hand departure. I'll circle back around head south. Okay, go to the beach. About 2,500. Running the 696 demo unit on ship's power with the brightness set to maximum, and as you can see, the screen is easily readable in a sunny cockpit, even through sunglasses. Let's just quickly step through some of the 696's features. As I mentioned, the controls are a combination of soft keys and joystick, similar to the G1000. We'll zoom in and take a look at the primary navigation screen. You can pick the map display you want with these soft keys from the left, the VFR map and then an IFR map that offers both low airway detail and high airway detail. And any time during any of these maps, when you're viewing the maps, you can press the back button and the panel button, and you can get a look at uh, Garmin's proprietary flight attitude display, which has been on the 396 and the 496, and shows flight attitude, airspeed, and various other flight data derived entirely from GPS. There's also a terrain function, and uh, we'll turn off the uh, panel function. If you look on the terrain function, you can see all the high terrain in the area, and you can also see uh, towers and other obstacles that are represented by the little uh, inverted triangles. And as we mentioned earlier, the 696 has controls that are very much like a 530. On the right side of the unit, it's got an enter, a clear, a menu, a flight plan key, a direct two key, and an airs key. All of these will be familiar to anyone who's operated a 430 or a 530. What's different about the 696 and what makes it have more in common with the G1000 is that it has a scroll wheel and a joystick up here that you can uh, scroll through the various features. If you look uh, uh, on the bottom uh, menu here, there's a map, waypoint, the weather page, terrain, and uh, information for XM, and also, also the satellite information page. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other uh, display pages on the 696. As do all of Garmin's navigators, the GPS map 696 has a series of pages, each with different data. You can step through these with the joystick or the soft keys. This page has a basic navigation display on the lower part of the screen and the flight instrument page on the top section. If the airplane is equipped with a Garmin GTX 330 transponder, the 696 can also display traffic information using the FAA's TIS system. 
One feature new to portable navigators and not found in the GPS Map 496 is the chart and plate function. As you can see from this display, the 696 displays VORs in airway data relative to the aircraft position and course. It can also display a full-size approach plate, and if you want to see the details, you can zoom in to read frequencies or data in the minima box. For planning purposes, the 696 also has AOPA's airport directory in its database. Since the 696 is so new, we haven't really had a chance to ring it out thoroughly, but we like what we see so far. The screen is bright and crisp, and it's got that easy as a box of rocks operating logic that Garmin is famous for. As you might expect, this capability isn't cheap. The 696 retails for $32.95 or $28.95 for the 695 version, which doesn't include XM weather. You can see the 696 here at AOP Expo in San Jose in Garmin's booth and check out our sponsors, Aircraft Spruce and Specialty at www.aircraftspruce.com and JA Air Center at www.jaair.com. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Thanks for watching our coverage of AOPA Expo 2008.